Morning. So today I'm down at the shop, and uh, when I say shop, I mean like old barn on the farm. Uh, a friend of mine was doing a timing belt replacement on a Honda. And one of the things that you have to be very careful with when you're doing that is uh, when you align the timing marks between the crank and the two camshafts up on the heads, uh, there's a tendency for the back cam to jump ahead on you if you um, advance it beyond the actual timing mark. The challenge is that timing mark is hard to see. Apparently Honda makes a proprietary tool that can anchor the cam in place once you've aligned the mark so that there's no danger of it advancing on you. Because if it spins on you, um, which can happen as you're, as you're turning it, because everything's under tension with the valve springs and whatnot, if it spins on you, but the crank isn't turning the engine over at the same time, your valves end up making contact with the top of the pistons and you bend the valves. So, to help him, I'm going to make a tool, at least I'm gonna to try to anyway, um, I think I can. Uh, I've taken a look at it and I can make a, 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 a way to anchor the rear cam so that it will not advance beyond the point of where you need it to be uh, aligned at the timing mark. So, that's what I'm working on today. So when I say old shop, I mean, I really mean old shop. This used to be a, uh, a pelting shed. My parents were mink ranchers, and this is where we used to uh, skin the mink. Now, if you've never seen a mink being skinned, well, that's your loss, <laughs> or your gain, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, but yeah, this is where I come and putter, tinker away at things when, uh, when I need to do so. I like it. I've played in here since I was a very small boy, and when I mean small boy, I mean I was six weeks old when my parents bought this farm. So I've spent my whole life, uh, spent my whole life here and it's definitely seen better days. But there's so much old stuff in here that I use all the time that if I am making something Which I do, I make bespoke items all the time for different uh, things that I need to do. There's usually something around that I can make it out of. So, you know, here we are. That was the tour. So you may be wondering, why Arnie, were you entrusted with this very expensive head off of a Honda uh, to work on in your own grubby little shop here? Well, the truth of the matter is, it's off my vehicle. and. Uh, uh, to that end, a uh, massive shout out to Gary Verbeek at Abbotsford Christian School to be able to get this head uh, essentially rebuilt at cost. Yeah, at cost. Yeah, appreciate that very much. That is the perfect size. Okay, so if you're wondering what I'm doing, I need to be able to secure the cam and I have to secure it with one of the uh, well, one of the mounting bolts where the cover goes on, but really I only have one choice. It has to be this one right here. Uh, the reason being is the belt wraps around this way. So um, I can't clamp it to say this one over here uh, or this one down here because any of those would block uh, the ability to put the belt back on once this has been secured. So using my coffee can I figured out exactly the diameter that I need to make what I'm making. I've got a picture in my head, you'll see it eventually. And for thickness I don't have to, it doesn't have to be much. Just enough to clear this, really, and then bolt to that. 
So really, a centimeter and a half is all I need to clear. So, Fortunately, I didn't have a hole saw um, the size that I needed, so I've had to cut this out from a piece of wood uh, using the miter saw. And now I'll just take it to the, uh, to the sander and knock down the edges, make it round. Yes, I'm very pleased with the roundness of this. Well, that's a pretty excellent fit. Uh, that'll work just fine. And if you're thinking that, uh, hey Arnie, why are you building it out of wood? Um, well, really this is a, it's more of a prototype. And at the end of the day, it actually only has to be a one and done. Um, but yeah, maybe I could like 3D print this. We have the technology. Now, if I could have one of these sprockets off and loose, it would be easy to flip that and I would trace lines, right? I would trace lines here, you know, at the different web points. Then I would create six corresponding grooves in here so this literally would lock down in place. But I'm not pulling that off. That's been installed and torqued to spec. I'm not touching that. So I have to figure out a different way to do this for the time being. If we ever move beyond the prototype stage, this is what I would do. I'd take one of these and I would create I would create something that I could literally lock in place. Because that's elegant. I have a plan. Okay, as I mentioned, what I would really like to be able to do is to notch the back side of this with six notches to align with, let's call these spokes. Um, but I can't do that with this sprocket pulley attached to the head. So then I thought, well, maybe I could make something that would slip in behind here, like so, and I would weld a couple of threaded posts onto there, drill a couple of holes in here. This would be behind, the post would come up, this would slip on over, I put a couple of nuts and washers on, and now that's held in place. Problem is, trying to assemble all of that um, I think that'll prove to be difficult. So I'm going to try something a little different by modifying these pieces that I made. Okay, stand by. Okay, so now I have a hole through there. I'll just throw in a little bit of a countersink. So the screw can recess a little better. Have you figured out what I'm doing yet? Okay, well, it's crude, but it's a prototype. Let me show you how it works. If I actually had some kind of channel, I could have used it here but I don't so I had to just bend some metal and make some but uh, what this will do was lock over over the uh, over the pulley and then our bolt will run through here into this boss down here and this will prevent this pulley from moving and the cam from advancing and uh, still allow the belt to run the path that it needs to run. It won't interfere with the belt. Here's the other thing too, in case you're wondering. I aligned the timing marks first and then I made this to fit. So, in a way, it will assure you that your timing marks are aligned because if they're not, it won't fit. 
So, there you go. Like I said, it's crude, it's a prototype, and uh, who knows? Maybe it will be more than just a one and done.